Good morning, everybody. We're at Port St. Joe, Florida, White City Bridge, actually, on the Intercoastal Waterway. Uh, we're coming down here today to fish with uh, Captain Alan Duke. We're going to catch a trout. It's uh, Yesterday, actually, was Pam's birthday, so this is a part of a per birthday gift, too, and uh, which is, I think it's going to be fun. Now, most people, don't, Captain Allen, don't think of January, the mid-January, being a typical trout fishing day. Most people come down here probably, their wives and kids lay out on the beach in the summertime and dad gets to go trout fishing with you and here we are in mid-January. Tell us about that. Right, our season is from March 1st to uh, October-ish, uh, a little bit into October. But during the winter time, the fish leave the bay and they'll come up in the intercoastal following the food, you know, the bait and the warmer temperatures and the deeper water. And once they come up in here, you have a better chance of catching them. They're a little easier to catch sometimes although today might prove wrong we got a front coming it should make the fish bite uh, so during the winter time come up and get up in the intercoastals uh, the river systems and the creeks and you'll do fine y'all stay tuned we're gonna we're gonna go catch a trout and a redfish and i'm gonna whoop these men Alan, how did you how did you happen to find these fish that we're that we're fishing for right here? I was fishing the bass tournament, and uh, we was catching bass, but for the most part we couldn't catch bass for the trout and the redfish. They were every time we throw a bait out to catch a bass, the trout and the redfish would take it, and oh, and no. it usually welcome that kind of fishing. But when, in a tournament, it takes up the time right. and getting them off the hook and all that right. stuff, and, and it was aggravating because we needed the bass. We catching bass but, but for every bass we caught we caught five or six trout and, and redfish and some good trout so uh, when you when you call and said you want to do the show I figured this would be the best place to start and Wait. so far the redfish do good. Well you know that's that's the beauty of fishing down here you know there's such a wide variety of things he's bass fishing and he's catching trout and redfish so you know, you never know, so it's just it's just a good place to come fishing overall, and and you never know what you're gonna catch. And I think I'm next. You just throw wherever you want, bro. Now, Alan, we we made a short move here, and uh, I'm tired of fishing out the back of the boat because I have leftovers. That's all I get is leftovers. So I'm moving up to the front. Now we've made a short run here. What you shaking your head about? Because that's so typical. We could be in a 50 foot boat and you'd want to be on the last two foot with me. 
Oh, well, it, <laughs> you are a hardy. <laughs> now, Alan, back to fishing. We made a short run here. Now, when I noticed when we were on the other side of Lake Wimico, the water was running east, or the opposite direction of what it is now. Now, we come on the west side of Wimico, and the water's running the opposite direction. You had an Apalachicola tide on that side, and now we're dealing with a St. Joe tide on this side. Well, that's exactly why tide just messes my whole mind up. I, uh, that's so confusing to me. Well, you know, too, that's why when an individual comes down here, they ought to hire somebody like Captain Allen out of Fresnel's Marina and, and take them fishing because people can't understand that kind of tide deal. It, no further than you and I live away from here, we still can't really figure it out the tide and and alan lives here and so he he's just very versed on the on the tides you know you're right because in in my in my small mind and way of thinking if the, if the water's moving east on that side and it's moving west on this side it shouldn't be long for the middle ought to be dry <laughs> and that's exactly what happens oh yeah yes you it will get so low today out there in lake wimico that if you get out of the intercoastal waterway you'll stop That gummit Allen, you did it to me again. Of course, I ain't got him in the boat yet. <laughs> he might try to whoop me. Oh, look how pretty. That gum. He swallowed that bait too. Can I stick my finger in his mouth? Just the lower jaw, yeah. Don't don't let him clamp down because he's got teeth in his upper on his upper lip. He's got teeth on his lower lip, but not the kind that'll hurt you. Look at that. Ain't that just pretty? That gum, baby, that is. Now, Alan, tell us about this uh, this redfish laying up here. Now, we're in brackish water. It's, it's a mixture, right? Yeah. Uh, the water comes out of the... Uh, if you go this way, you'll go into the gulf below Apalachicola. If you go this way and stay in the intercoastal, you'll go out in Panama City into the gulf. Uh, just a little ways up here, about eight miles, you can go into what's called the T Canal, uh, St. Joe Canal, and it'll go out in the Gulf there in St. Joe. But we're way down here on the river system. Uh, we've got brackish water creeks, freshwater creeks, and everything coming out. And uh, uh, these fish are just gathering up on these channel edges. We're fishing the eelgrass, and uh, it's going to be good. What's that redfish feed on norm mostly? Food. <laughs> well, up here, up here, root, root beer grub. <laughs> yeah, up here he's feeding on shrimp because see the shrimp comes into our our river systems here. So he's feeding on shrimp. There's a lot of pinfish up here because they'll come into this river system out of the Gulf. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Elwes, uh, uh, pogies, that kind of bait. Plenty of food for these fish up here. What you got, honey? Oh, let's see. Let's see what I got. I think uh, you did a lot of talking while ago about, I'm going to whoop y'all. <laughs> yep, she could keep hers. I got the first one. What you got? <laughs> oh, look. Look, what are you doing? He's so big, you got to try to hide him. That's all I can do to pick him up. <laughs> No, mine's not as big as yours. I understand. But that's all right. That's it's, all right. it's fun, and he pulled your string, right? Yeah, it's fun. Ain't no doubt. Ain't no doubt. This is fun fishing. I'm not sure yet. That's the beauty of fishing down here. Yeah, I guess so. You never, you never know if it has teeth or... I think it's a largemouth. 
I'll be darn. Look at there. I'll be <laughs> doggone. Can't take me nowhere that I don't catch a bass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. But now you know, you said that baby, now you are a professional bass fisherman. For the people that don't know you, you're a professional bass fishing person. And here you are down here fishing. Well, we come down here trying to catch a, a, a red fish or a trout, but you know, uh, like I said earlier, this uh, this whole area is like a, I hate to use Louisiana's terminology, but it's a sportsman's paradise. You never know what you're gonna catch down here. It's, it's an excellent bass fishing area also so you know we're trying to catch a trout and i threw out there and kept, caught a bat what you got buddy it's a speckledy trout bring him on right there there's what we want to catch right there well we had a double the only problem is his is much larger <laughs> than mine <laughs> that's uh what that is is i'm more hungrier than you are <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. How about that? That's all right. Now this fish here, see that yellow mouth? When them fish are up here, now this water that's coming out of this creek is a dark color. Now there's two reasons we got uh, a yellow mouth. This fish here is real dark black on the back. We caught him in 20 feet of water and he shouldn't have been that color. But what caused that was this is this creek that's flowing out of here has got black water, so the fish is just blocking the color of the water. That's what it's doing. But the but yeah. uh, these fish love to get around sand of any kind, sandbars, sand like like most of this intercoastal waterway, you don't see the sand, but on these points that goes into these intercoast these little creeks, you got washed up bars that you can't see them, but they're there. And they'll get on that sand and, and, and lay up on it. You catch plenty of fish. Well, good deal. What you got up here, buddy? Yeah. What you got? It's another large, man. And he swallowed that thing. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Look now, at there. A while ago, I was telling you about that trout being dark on account of the water. See how white this bass is? Yeah. And the light, light, light brown. That fish come out of 20 feet of water. That's what color they're supposed to be. <laughs> That's what color the trout should have been, except they took, they've been up in that creek. They come out of that creek and they were black, see? This, this little bass has got that white, brown tint. Still a good fish. It's a it's legal, legal fish if you were tournament fishing. Well, you know, it's like this. I, there ain't nothing that I can't catch around here. What that have you got? <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Talk to me. Like I said, that's the beauty of fishing down here. You never know. We just put a we just put a largemouth in the in the boat, and while you were actually filming the largemouth, you catch a Spanish. That's awesome. That's right, baby. I, I actually had that camera in my hand. Alan's talking to me about the largemouth. It's on his hook, and this tried to take my bait away. That That's amazing. I mean, that's... I'm, I'm sure the camera shook when I set the hook with my left hand. Well, so... I hollered, catch him. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, uh, you know, that, that just really goes to prove the point that we've been trying to make. That, that this is, uh... This is just a place to come fish and have a great time. That's exactly right. We got largemouth, we've got redfish, trout, now a spanish, all in the same morning. Stick around, we'll probably catch a hybrid or a striper for us <laughs> over with. Good job, honey. Thank you.
Y'all mind telling me what you're doing up there and you're supposed to be fishing? This is called 15 minute state of Florida law break. We're showing the fish in a fight. Where are we going? What are we going to do right there? Fish. A month and a half ago. The intercoastal comes in in Panama City and they cut through the woods and don't have to get out there in the ocean. You can come all the way across from Texas. And I almost got you missing a fish. Well, you got me then. Do I need to cast out and catch them? Apparently. <laughs> That's two in a row right there. What about you, Pamela? Well, my bait was coming along behind his. I was hoping they'd bite mine. I must not be holding my mouth right. I hear you. But I still have the biggest fish in the box. Well, I think you women have a hard time holding your mouth, period. <laughs> Whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> I had a little boy ask me on a guide trip one time. He says, Kevin, man, how am I supposed to hold my mouth right? Because his daddy told him that he wasn't holding his mouth right. He said, Kevin, man, how am I supposed to hold my mouth right? I said, shut. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. All right, I'm fitting to go to fishing. All right, Captain Allen, we made a pretty long run then. Tell us tell us how we, we're, we're past lunch. Uh, it hadn't been the, you know, the the hottest day in the world as far as catching, but we've had fun. We've got, we got several fish in the ice chest. Now, we've made a pretty decent run now, and tell us how the conditions are now. The conditions here is way better, probably the best we've had it. The water's coming in, and it's cleared up some. And they're, we just stopped. I throw it out, had a good bite, and I just had another good bite. And uh, what do you mean the water's coming in? The tide's coming in from the Gulf, so it's real clear. I think we just saw Pam miss one too. Oh, look at there! Look, look, look. I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess I'll put my uh, camera down and go to fishing. Dang, gummy! I get it. He pulled my. my What kind of bait's that? Let's, sh let's show that up close, baby. We haven't really talked about the baits. That's a man's root beer four inch grub. And uh, you have to, they don't make them for stores. You have to buy them. Uh, the only way I could get them is order 10,000 of them. Ooh. And they're that good, that's why I ordered them. Uh, uh, they're made by Man's Bait Company in Ufall, Alabama, and uh, that one color there just still enough, you know, all around for that to stay on the market. So, uh, but around here is probably one of the best baits you'll ever throw.
go. Captain got him Finally. in. Finally put him in the boat. They biting funny? What's the deal? Yeah, I don't know. It's See, the tide just changed and it started coming in. We stopped them all ago. So they've been, you want to measure, I'll measure. Uh, so they're not eating, they're just biting. Kind of knocking the bait around. Probably 30, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. They'll eat. If you catch him, you'll have to get the bait out of his throat. I have one too. What you got, baby? I finally, finally, hair lip one. Yes, I did. Blind hog find an acre every now and then. <laughs> That's all right. That gummit is fun. It's it is, fun. It is fun. And I sure can't get him unhooked. There we go. These are biting faster and faster. The ones that was hitting us earlier are now hooking up. That's typical for the tide doing what it's doing. Thank you. Now they got to go up a little bit. What you got, Captain? I think that I finally hooked a croaker inside. And I thought it was a trap. Oh. knocking our baits around. The trout are in there with them and we're catching a couple of trout thinking, oh man, we're getting all them great bites and everything. Well, that's probably what's doing the bite. But with that said, these are very good eating. Good deal. I don't think he knows he's hooked yet. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, that's what that Look at that, would you? I'll be doggone, baby. Where's my sandwich? Here, hold on just a minute. Y'all look how that fish ate that. Even though he's that small, and I'm sorry, honey, but he is that small, he ate that bait. Yes, he did. <laughs> but he was fun. I hear you. God, we was when that one hit, I drug him across the top. They still need to grow up. That's all right. We're having fun. They're biting fast now, so the big ones has got to start sooner or later. I hear you. With uh, what you got, head? buddy? Well, I think it's a clown. You want the net? Oh, well, there. See the see the difference. See, remember I told you they're gonna start eating, and they were gonna grow up. Well, they grow it up. Look, you can't see that bait. Yeah, that's a good trout there, yeah. Alan. Hey, up here, show them close what you're talking about. That bait go. is gone. A while ago, we was hooking them all out on the outside of the mouth and barely hooking them, skin hooking them. Right. And now they're eating. He ate that thing. You're right. All right, good deal. Let's catch some more. I got him. What you got, baby? What you got? Well, Come in here. Troy on Swamp People says tree, tree shaker. I got a head shaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shaking. I hear you. Dad well, Gummit, you had two on. Alan, you had one on? Yeah. Come on. What you got, baby? Ain't I he gonna measure? Ain't... I don't know. We'll see. All right, now I don't know if we've told everybody, but how long they gotta be, Captain Allen? 15 to 20. Now five apiece, and one of those five can be over 20. Okay. As long as you. All right. Well, let's let's check it. Let's check this one out and see what he is. What you got, baby? Fourteen and a half. That's what Captain Allen said. Fourteen and a half. That's all right. It was still fun. We're having fun. Having fun. Catching fish. What you got? I got another golden croaker. That's like fried chicken to me. Let's see. Them things are good. You got a bass. I think so. Yep. I'll be darned.
just caught a trout, moved 20 feet, and caught a largemouth. Moved 20 feet a while ago to get away from porpoises. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's all I right. I guess that means I'm destined to bass fish on. <laughs> that's all right. one particular point filming a large mouth and you catch a spanish That's i right. mean that just that just don't happen that often yeah it's uh, and then and then in turn you i think you had a trout and i caught a large mouth so i mean right. you know it's just it it's been an awesome day because of the variety we never knew what we were going to catch so it was a, it was a surprise right. that way and you know we've just had a ball Y'all join us again and, and uh we'll see you next time We've made three or four throws and got a bite on every throw, so. Okay, well, I probably ought to put down this camera so we can catch them. Probably if you put down the camera, we could catch them. <laughs>